This weekend the Basel Fantasy Convention took place. There was a lot to see anyway, though at the Playmobil booth in particular this brand new Knight Rider collector set. It stood no chance, I had to have one. Playmobil has recently released a number of models as fan service, ranging from the ginormous USS Enterprise from Star Trek the original series, the A-Team, the Aston Martin from Goldfinger and the DeLorean from Back to the Future. And now, by the end of May, Kit has joined them. Here we have the front of the box. And as the Helte Steine used to say, the adventures of the backside, nothing to be afraid of. There are two cardboard inserts in the box, which nicely present the figures and kit. Another nice detail is the printing, which captures the style of the El Mirage Dry Lake. They really put some effort into the interior presentation. I think it's really great that the parts weren't just thrown in loose. The larger box with the figures also contains various bags with the small parts inside. And this is now it, all the 53 parts laid out. At the top left of the picture we have a sheet of stickers. The stickers plague does not seem to only be affecting the Danish bricks manufacturer. The first few pages of the building instructions provide some background information about Knight Rider and Kit. Let's take a look at Michael. The character looks quite nice and echoes Michael's red turtleneck outfit from the pilot. Of course, the leather jacket is just as important as the wristwatch. This is a print, although the print appears a bit unclean and warped here. And here we have Bonnie in the signature white jumpsuit she wore in early episodes of season 1. The hairpiece is worth mentioning as it's made out of soft plastic. Devon looks wonderful too. He has received matching cuffs for his suit. However, I had associated more grey color suits with Devon. The dominant blue here somehow doesn't really fit me. As already mentioned, gluing is required for all decorative elements, be it on the computer console or on the desk. Even the pop-up headlights are made of decal stickers. There's no decals for the dashboard and the rear lights, but for the rotating license plate there is. Besides the pop-up headlights, the license plate is the only moving part on Kit's body. Neither the doors nor the bonnet can be opened, and the trunk cannot really be opened either, apart from the fact that the entire roof can be removed. The wheels are easy to attach. The look with the turbocast rims and the bowling ball hopcaps is definitely right. Instead of the Goodyear lettering, there is a Playmobil lettering on the tie wall. A grappling hook is also included in the set. The cord is easily attached to the hook and the clip. The clip itself is attached to the underside behind the license plate. But this reveals that there is no easy way to stow the grappling hook. There's no compartment, no ejection or retraction mechanism, no winch, nor anything else. My set included duplicates of Devon's cuffs and Michael's wristwatch. Here we see Devon at his desk. The white thing there would be his computer, which is missing a flat attachment that could not be found despite repeated searches. I guess I'll have to ask Playmobil for a spare part. Now let's look at the inside of Kit. The roof can only be removed as a whole, so the T-tops cannot be removed individually. So there's also no ejection seat. And as already mentioned, the front doors cannot be opened. The interior pretty clearly reveals a season 1 dashboard. The voice box lights up when Kit speaks, which is a pretty cool gimmick. However, it's not clear to me why there are no decals for the switch pods or the sidebars of the voice modulator. And finally we also have this computer printout, which Kit can output from its built-in printer beneath the dashboard. And with that, Michael and Kit are ready for action. The scanner does not have the all lights on effect, but it does show the trailing lights effect. 
and of course there are 8 LEDs, exactly as it should be. By pressing on the hood, Kit plays various English sentences from the series. And notice once again how the voice box lights up when Kit speaks. So that would be it, the Playmobil Kit. I would say that this set is clearly targeted at adult fans of my age. Hold it right there, boy. What about my age? Of my age. Today's young people are unlikely to be interested in cult vehicles from films and series from the 60s and 80s. I honestly do think it's a bit of a shame that the grappling hook didn't receive an ejection mechanism or at least a winch. Other things like the non-opening doors or the T-tops I can't really blame for. My Playmobil cars didn't have this either some 30 years ago, so taking the roof off and you're done. I think that has largely remained the same to this day. From my point of view, it's definitely a set that has cult status and recognition value. While it's less detailed when compared to die cost set in the $200 range, hey, it's a toy and you can easily play around with your kids if you want to do that at all. Otherwise, of course, this easily passes as a display model. Cost around 80 US dollars. My perception, the price was clearly aimed at the adult target group. If you compare it with police and fire engines, for example, which cost just half. Of course, for a licensed model, and certainly with not a huge sales market, a certain price surcharge is of course justifiable, but the $80 is certainly at the upper end. But at least while the Danish bricks manufacturer did not accept the idea's proposal, Playmobil is at least delivering Michael and Kit in time enough for the 40th anniversary of the series. Actually, the only thing missing right now is the semi, right? And how about that one helicopter that could fly faster than sound? If you have any questions, suggestions or criticism, please write them in the comments below. See you next time.